guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, today I am going to chit chat about how we are doing geography using the good and the beautiful. Um, geography is going to be slightly different, but I think that's kind of like the theme with how I'm using the good and the beautiful and why I love it so much is that it kind of gives me the tools to be slightly different, you know. Um, Geography is super important in our homeschool and it is because I had this crazy dream of um, or maybe not so crazy dream of us being this adventurous explorer type traveling homeschooling family. Um, it's part of our big picture in homeschool and so uh, having the kids and myself as well and my husband understanding more about the world around us is really one of our foundations in homeschool so um, whereas it's important for sure to carve out those core subjects like language arts and math it's also really important for me to include geography and finding a way to fit it in has taken me a while to just kind of find a confident comfortable space for us to live in as far as exploring different parts of the world around us so when i first started off with geography um, i have books like beautiful books like our maps book and our united states book um, and we normally i normally set those out for the kids to just kind of like happen to stumble across different parts of the world um, of course i have our maps that are a major focal point in our homeschool room and we are constantly um, searching for different parts of the world as it comes up in normal conversation or when you meet new people and you hear they're from different places then we go and find it on the map it's just been really exciting but I did want to have a bit more structure to it um, I then started to um, work on building a homeschool travel wish list uh, so basically when we we go and find different places that we want to travel to um, and we look for more information about those places and then we would just naturally write about them naturally draw a map of that area just some really introductory simple things um, that we would do and then include those things into a little portfolio or binder where we keep them together um, now that I wanted to add a bit more structure um, into the mix, I <laughs> how I lay our days out or our schedule are very important and they're laid out by subject. We have been following somewhat of a block schedule. We do our core subjects um, in the beginning of the day, so our Bible, our language, arts, and math are on a block. So um, math would be on Monday, language arts on Tuesday, Math would be on Wednesday, language arts on Thursday. Um, then after that, we do reading. After that, we handle unit studies. And then after that, we do an elective. And inside of our electives, um, our day for geography, I believe, is normally on Thursday. <laughs> I said that was a mouthful, but I normally get those questions. So hopefully that just kind of, in a nutshell, clears it up. So we do geography on Thursdays. And um, we've just been kind of winging it, you know, uh, using some of the things that I mentioned earlier. In The Good and the Beautiful, I think I found a really nice way to just kind of add a little bit more structure to the mix. And I just thought I would talk about that now. If you have seen my unboxing video that I did a bit ago, um, if you haven't seen it, I will leave it up in the cards here and in the description box and in the, I always stumble over that. Anyway, and in the description box below, I basically list in that video what um, we have in our homeschool from the good and the beautiful. I'm going to just talk about the different parts that I use to pull together our geography into one little curriculum. So what I really like is that they do include multi subjects into each of their levels in their language arts curriculum. For instance, in their language arts and literature level three, which I'm using with my boys, um, at the bottom it will say literature, grammar and usage, punctuation, art, geography, spelling, vocabulary, writing, which is super nice and it's very beneficial. How 
forever. Okay, um, the way that it's laid out, it will move from one lesson of grammar and then maybe the next lesson will be on spelling and then the next lesson will be on art will incorporate some type of art and then the next lesson will have some type of geography. For instance, if you take a look at the level three of the language arts and literature, look at the table of contents. The first lesson being commas in a series. The second lesson is silent E jobs one through four. The third lesson is spelling rule um, number one. And then you continue on down. Lesson nine is on possessive nouns. We would start on that lesson and the kids would be really into it. They would really get into the idea of the um, possessive nouns. And then the next day, we went to lesson 10 and that was geography, God's plan for our world. Okay, so my kids were so into the possessive nouns that it just didn't feel like a nice transition for us. And so that was when I really started to think about, well, how could I make this work for me, you know, work best for me? I love what is included, but I don't necessarily like um, the flow or the rhythm that is producing in our home school. I just felt like I was splitting things up. So instead, that's when I really got into taking ownership of the curriculum and unpacking things. So we would spend a few days on possessive nouns because they were really into it. They were getting excited about identifying them. I would go and put other examples up on their chalkboards. Um, they would go over them together on their own. And I love when my kids get into that groove and I never want to I always feel horrible breaking it up. So I decided not to. And that's why I've spoken in, um, in my pre-K and level K um, language arts review and if you haven't seen that video you might want to take a look at that even if you are not um, looking into the pre-k or the level k because I have I talk a lot more about um, using this curriculum in general and I'll link that up in the cards and in the description box in the description box below so um, that's when I started to say you know what Serena you can just take a few extra days and unpack that lesson, the possessive nouns or the idioms or um, whatever else. And then I found that in doing that, I could still do the same thing with other parts of the curriculum. So I decided to do that with the geography. Instead of including them as a next lesson after possessive nouns and before a sentence needs three things, I decided to pull it out. I believe there are about eight geography lessons inside of this level. Yeah, uh, inside of this language arts level. And so I pulled each one of them out. And here is where the PDF form, okay, the PDF version of this curriculum comes in. Obviously, I don't want to rip them out of here, but I can easily just go and print them out. And I, I do have an example, but I don't know where it is right now and I have a lot of mess going on. So anyway, <laughs> but you can print them out and you can pull the bits and pieces together that you want to into one individual little mini course, I guess it would be. And so that's basically what I decided to do. Um, it starts at lesson 10. So on lesson 10, this is the first lesson of geography in this level, and it's just God's plan for our world. And I just go through the regular deal, reading to um, the child or the child reading to you, looking at the pictures and labeling them, and then moving on. And then the next lesson is found in lesson 18, and they go over continents, countries, and states. You read the page, you complete the exercise, you use cursive to write out the continents. And so that was what I decided to do, was just to pull the geography lessons out of the language arts level. There are only, like I said, I think eight lessons of geography inside of this book. However, um, when they go through other lessons, there's always mention of different places in the world. And we take advantage of that. Um, so I'll ask them questions. Well, where was this person from? Where is that on the map? Let's find that on the map together. What do you know about this place? Um, and then we will just 
write down any interesting or important information in our geography notebook and keep it moving. Inside of the level three companion, the beginning is a map key um, and continents. A map key for Europe. A map key for North America. So you kind of get the, you know, gist of things. So I went through and printed out these pages and included this in my own little mini course of geography. The next thing I use because I have both level three and level four language arts that I use for the kids. And you could definitely do this because they are, even if you only own one of the levels, but remember level one through level five, if I'm not mistaken, is free for you to download online. So you could easily download those things and pull out the geography bits to kind of like collect them into one binder and work your way through that part of the curriculum, but just as one separate piece. Um, the next thing I use to add to our geography is this creative companion that comes along with the level four course, which I'll show you the level four course too. So wait, let me show you now. So now the level four course is laid out slightly differently. Not, well, yeah, it starts to look a little different. Um, in the beginning, it has a level four at a glance and we'll just kind of show you what is included, the concepts that are covered. However, there is not a table of contents in this level. So it gets a little bit trickier. So I really um, went through and just kind of took a look at the content. And I really, I mean, I take time to sit with stuff and think about it and think creatively about ways to use it that would best fit us. So that's what I did. So this is just an example of what I pulled out from level four. Um, there is not a whole lot and it's not separated, like I said, by the table of contents, um, just as the level three is. But if you go through, you can easily identify the different parts that you could use that would be geography. And in this case, um, in the, the second course book of level four, um, less, lesson 61 covers Asia. So they talk about countries in Asia and, um, and preparing the child to write an essay on Asia. Asia covers a vast area, the home to seven of the world's 10 largest cities. Use the information in this section and your own words. Asia has a wide variety of amazing wildlife because Asia has such a varying landscape. It is home to many kinds of unique animals. They talk about the geography of Asia, um, the animals of Asia. Another thing that I use from the level four is the creative companion. It will tell you down here that it includes writing, art, and geography. You can just flip through and see the lessons that include all the geography bits. Lesson two is on New York. And what I generally do is just kind of um, remove any sections that make reference to things that we haven't covered just yet. I found that to be very easy. Um, it really just gives me a starting point. We read, we use the tracing paper, we follow the instructions that we can follow, and we eliminate the instructions that we can't follow right now. Um, so we just use these same things and add them to our geography lessons. A lot of times we, I, I haven't found it to be a problem using them out of order, and I think that's because um, it, when you're going through the lessons, it will make mention of you. Okay, this is a good example. So lesson 22 is on Belgium. And it starts by saying the next book you will read in your course takes place in Belgium, a country on the continent of Europe. Well, by the time we start working on Belgium, we actually wouldn't we would we won't be on the lesson that is going to refer to this lesson on Belgium. I feel like that's okay. Yeah, so we'll just eliminate the part that says, you know, that talks about the book that you're reading because they're not reading it yet. But um so I'll just say Belgium is a country on the continent of Europe. Locate Belgium on the map on this page. Which four countries border Belgium? Say them out loud. The tiny country that is hard to see and is on the southern border of Belgium is Luxembourg. See? Pretty simple. So I just eliminate the parts 
that I don't need and I just keep it moving. And then once we get to that lesson, actually get to that lesson inside of the language arts course book, then we will revisit this lesson and they will be even more familiar with it. So I like that repetition. It's great for kids, you know, and I feel like it's really helpful when you're teaching because when they're familiar with something, they're already interested in it and they're already going to have um, a leg to stand on when they start to ask questions instead of it just being brand new information that they're trying to wrap their minds around. So it's working out for me. <laughs> Lesson four is on the U.S. East Coast. Um, the East Coast refers to the 14 states that have a shoreline on the Atlantic Ocean, and then it lists it. Then it gives them instructions um, to use tracing paper and trace the 14 states on the map below that make up the East Coast. Label each of the 14 states, label the map, the East Coast, and then draw a compass rose. Now up at the top, you'll see that it says, in the level four course, you will explore two states on the US East Coast, New York and Rhode Island. A super simple lesson for me to be able to add to our separate little geography. Um, you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> oh my gosh. So I just pull out the parts that I can from there to give us ideas on what to work on and what to include in our geography composition notebook. Um, what else do I use, you guys? Oh, also in the level four, there are the geography and grammar cards. I use these in conjunction with other little cards and pieces that I laminate to use with our maps book and such. These have been a huge resource to identify the different regions um, and to give them something to be able to quiz one another and see if they can memorize, if they remember where um, certain regions are where certain states are um, uh, sometimes I use with Savannah she's not going to necessarily remember uh, what the state is but I might ask her is this a state or is it a country she may remember that yeah we just kind of work our way through these um, I will have them see if they remember what the state is uh, see if they can tell me what the capital is see if they can tell me anything that they know about the state it's just separating the geography bits of the curriculum um, that I could in creating an own little mini course has been really helpful for us because you don't need a ton for geography. You just need a nice little starting point, some general practices as far as discovering and exploring the different parts of the world. 